Hey guys, welcome to another video, this time storing my African Campanotus maculatus. These beautiful yellow and black ants are larger than my average Campanotus. The workers are fast and look really cute, the majors are a bit clumsy, but look really impressive and bite very hard. Just look at those mandibles. They might look scary, but usually they stay in the background when my hand is in their setup and the much faster workers usually scout out my hand. As you can tell, these ants absolutely love their beetle jelly. All of my colonies are a fan of those cups, but the maculatus consumes them a lot. Their main source of protein is coming from adult tubia roaches. They are coming from the freezer and are really easy to cut up in the size your colony requires. Usually I cut the roaches from top to bottom. With a colony this size and ants this big, you give more ants the opportunity to feast at once. Every once in a while I feed them a huge cricket, because eating spaghetti every day would be boring, right? But dubia roaches are completely hollowed out as soon as they are done with it. Everything in one piece, and with the cricket I have small bits everywhere. Every two weeks the colony receives another treat, which might not be everyone's favorite. Don't worry, they come from the pet store and it's being sold as snake food. It's a cheap source of a lot of protein, and the ants like it a lot. I puncture the mouse a couple of times to give them some entry points, and I leave the mouse in for 3 or 4 days. You can see the workers filled up with the juices from the mouse. Some workers feast on the fur of the mouse, since it's coming from the freezer and the fur is still wet from defrosting, while other workers work their way inside. She is filled up pretty good. Let's continue with some less gruesome footage. It's a huge colony with a lot of territorium. They have three outworlds, one huge nest and meters of tubing. Let me show you the setup. The ants have a big outworld, which is connected with the rest of the setup through 4 meters of tubing. It's pretty amazing to see them going back and forth through the tubing. At the end of the desk, the tubing is going up in a spiral, and at the end of the spiral, there's an outworld, which is being used as a nest, and an actual nest is right after that. I made the nest from white tongue, I like the aesthetics a lot, but it's far from practical for the ants. As you can see, mainly the lower chambers are being used. The nest doesn't have an hydration system, as the ants are from Africa and the colony is big enough to drive it out. They have access to drinking water at both sides of the nest. I love to spectate the beautiful yellow ants and their huge majors with the white background. I think the contrast is pretty nice. If you look closely on the floor, you can see the queen moving from the left to the right. I was pretty excited to see her, since I haven't seen the queen in ages. And it's always nice to know the queen is doing well. I have been looking for her after filming, but I can't find her anymore. She might be still in the nest. Or inside the spec skull. Or hiding somewhere in the castle. The ants have a nice big glass outworld on my desk, which has a castle in the back corner. I really enjoy watching them climb in the castle tower. Or the gatherings on the balcony. I always knew that the colony was shipping some brood in and out, but when I tried to film the inside, I noticed how packed the castle is. This is the side entrance. It's really hard to film, since it's in the back corner of the outworld, and it's in the dark. As you can see, there are lots and lots of workers, and if you look closely, you can spot the brood as well. The castle is pretty big and the ants are all the way up to the top, filled with workers. But that's not all. Left from the white tongue nest, the ants have a small outworld. And in this outworld there's a large skull in the middle. I give them water and sugar in here, just for easy access. It's hard to see, 
but the inside of the skull is packed with workers and brood as well. I will be making them another white tongue nest soon. But this time I will optimize the space and just give them a horizontal nest. It's pretty amazing to see the ants walking in and out of the castle or the skull, but it's hard to see what's going on inside. The skull will probably stay right where it is since I used that outworld for water and sugar. This one is connected to the white tongue nest and from here I'll be adding nest after nest. The castle will eventually have to make place for a themed outworld. I will strip the outworld completely and will start with a new layout, brick by brick. I will try to document as much as I can and release the footage somewhere this winter. It will look something like I did over here. And I think I've been talking more than enough for now. I will add some additional 4K footage for the ones who would like to watch it. I mean, it's a shame to let it go to waste. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'd appreciate it a lot if you would subscribe and like and enjoy the rest of the footage.